podcast for a podcast. Send them back, another edition. How we doing out there? Good, great, grand, and yam, 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 puke. Fuck, man, this is the fourth goddamn take for the show. Fucking, I just, oh, the show would be a hell of a lot easier to do with a fucking producer. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but I mean, it adds credence to the shit that I was saying that it's the worst podcast in the history of podcasts. The content's terrible. The execution's terrible. The fucking the host is terrible. It's not entertaining. The only thing it lets you know is maybe you should check out this movie sometime. And then I think down the road, like ten years from now, and there's nobody's gonna give a fuck about movies. You got your fucking you got your twelve second fucking fix of feelings with goddamn TikTok. Fucking fuck's sake. And there's nothing wrong with the TikTok and the Twitchies and the YouTubies and, oh, I got my favorite YouTube, Hope. Whatever. Whatever. I just like long-form media. <laughs> I, I almost look forward to long-form media just so I can put my fucking phone down for an hour and a half without being bothered. Jesus Christ. I even have people calling while I'm doing the show. <laughs> it's okay. I picked up and I put her on. I don't... Whatever. That's that's how little I give a shit about this show. <laughs> As you see on your screen, your dial. However, you are unfortunately choosing to join me today. <clears throat> Challenge of the Masters, the sixth, the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six installment of the Shaw Scope Volume One collection uh, through Arrow Video. Arrow Video pre- presents Shaw Scope. Volume 1. Got 12 features on there and some soundtracks. And we are on uh, number (laughs) 6. We got 5 more to go. 6 more to go. Fucking math boy. Um, Yeah, yep. Because, you know... (laughs) They talk a lot of shit on this show. One of the things that I talk shit about, I don't like it when people... Are the distributors are nice enough to send you these very expensive box sets, and you pieces of garbage. My, I, I guess what would be my peers. I don't know. I don't consider myself a fucking critic at this point. I I feel no different than the guy that's waving the sign on the street corner trying to get you to lower your cell phone plan. That's <laughs> what I feel like, it's twisting and twirling the stupid fucking sign. <sighs> anyway, I don't take a box set that's 150 160 170 dollars and write three paragraphs on it and one of the paragraphs just tells you what movies are in it that's hardly promotion i mean i guess it's promotion but fuck this is coverage baby this is coverage right here doing each individual film and we are on number six <laughs> challenge of the masters 1976 Kung Fu film released in Hong Kong by the Shaw Brothers. Uh, Of course, directed by... Actually, this is his number... This is his second film, I believe, for Shaw Brothers. And uh, the next one would would be his third. But um, Kung Fu legend Lao Kar Lung, who, uh, unless you... uh, Unless you prefer the... uh, What is it? Mandarin... Mandarin, his name is uh, Lu, Chichi, uh, Lu Chia Liang. Lu Chia Liang. 
Uh, but he doesn't go by that. He's from the South. So, um, but the Shaw brothers always had, uh, it's either traditional Cantonese or traditional Mandarin. So there's just different names. The, I, the more I dig into the East, the more confused I get. And I think a lot of it just has to do with lost in translation. Like I, I feel like the people that like, I don't know, try to get us hip to the culture in China don't do a very good job in translating. <laughs> in fact, I'm just going to go out and say it the worst. The worst. Like, why is it, why is Challenge of the Masters, who has got everybody and their fucking brother in it, and virtually no, no, no accurate information can you get on the fucking web? I just, I don't, <laughs> just don't get it. Like, isn't that what the internet's for? Shit, man. Teenager. Wong Fei-Ung, if you know who Wong Fei-Ung is, I mean, just a fucking plethora of Wong Fei-Ung movies um, out of China between, like, 1960, 70. And there's still, occasionally you'll see a Wong Fei-Ung movie pop up, but he was was an actual um, kung fu master in the early 1900s, um, and his mystique has... It's still it's still alive and well today. So and and what Shaw Brothers there there's just there's so many Wong Fei Hung films that you'd almost have to refer to them as episodes at this point. There's so many movies. And like what they would do back in the day is they almost like the same characters, same cast, but it would be like a different story, but like it would be it wouldn't feel like it's a continuation of anything. It like it's just it's wild. It almost feels like Wong Fei Hung uh movies are kinda like X Files episodes <laughs> where you just got a bunch of random stuff and then occasionally we may bring something in that we have talked about in an earlier film that's completely unrelated with a completely different supporting cast and blah blah blah, blah, blah snore. Anyway, teenager Wang Fei Hung is sent to train in the art of Hungar Kung Fu. Hungar Kung Fu. From his father's teacher, Luke A. Choi. Uh, with training complete, Wang must fight an assassin to regain the honor of his school. This one is a little slow moving, so you only got about, I don't know, eight fights in this, and the majority of them are training sessions. Um. This this one is definitely more um, plot than it is kung fu, 100%. I don't mind that. I don't mind that because then you see the film that follows this, uh, Lao Kar Lung's uh, third film, and it is anything but. It is anything but. In fact, I'm super stoked. Well, I'm super stoked to talk about all of these with the exception of The Mighty Peking Man, which I just... Uh, I can't have that 90 minutes back. but it, yeah, And then the movie's fine, but I think if you've been listening to the show, a couple things. One, I think you can tell that I'm finally getting irritated with only working at my day job and then coming home and watching movies. I don't, that's, I love movies. I don't love movies that much. But uh, two, uh, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big time guy now. I, I value time much more than I have in uh, years past, and just the thought of spending 90 minutes on Mighty P. King, man, I was just like, fuck, I didn't, like, it was fine, but I didn't, I didn't need to do that. <laughs> Um, but, dude, Challenge of the Masters has everybody and their bu- uh, brother in it. Gordon Liu, if you guys don't know who fucking Gordon Liu is, sure you do. Pai Mei and the Kill Bill f- films. But Gordon Liu is arguably one of the most well-known um, kung fu players that we have ever seen. I mean, Shaolin Martial Arts, Five Shaolin Masters, Boxer Rebellion... Uh, Executioners from Shaolin, The 36 Chambers of Shaolin, Shaolin Mantis, Heroes of the East, Dirty Ho, Return to the 36 Chamber, Marshall Club, My Young Ante, Legendary Weapons of China. I'm not stopping, by the way, so you might want to have to fast forward 15 seconds because this is how many fucking good movies he's done. Shaolin and Wu-Tang, The Eight uh, Diagram Pole Fighter, Disciples of the 36 Chamber, which, ironically enough, I like the third installment of the 36 Chamber series more than the other two. Sacrilege in the Kung Fu! In the kung fu uh, circles, I know, but I like ruffling feathers just like I do with the horror crowd. But I, I, there, there ain't too much I love more than fucking with the horror crowd. Drunken Master Two, Hero of Shanghai, fucking Kill Bill, Drunken Monkey, Kill Bill Two, and on and on and on and on and on and on. 
Um, you also have Chen Quan Tai, uh, who plays Lu Ah Tsai, uh, Wang Yu, Li Lili, uh, Lu Chia Liang, who's also in this, also the director, but again, Lao Kao Lung, is his, that's the name that we all know him by now, Chiang Yang, Shi uh, Cheng Tian, uh, Lu Chia Young, uh, Chiang Tao, uh, Chen Kang Ye, uh, all of these people are in all of these fucking movies. Same with Fung, uh, Fung Hark On. Uh, <laughs> all of these guys. <laughs> it's just like, I, I would have to imagine that sometimes standing on set, <laughs> on a Shaw Brothers set in the 70s, oh, fuck, I'm shooting four fucking movies right now. Which one are we? <laughs> Which one is this one again? Because they're all kind of sim- similar. Uh, Billy Chan. Uh, Chen Long, uh, Chen Ming Wei, uh, nope, Chen Ming Wei, uh, Chen Tiko, uh, Chiang, uh, Chuck Chow, uh, John Chiang, uh, Chi Yi Hsiang, uh, and on and on and on. And guess who did the script again? If you guys have been listening to the previous episodes, guess who wrote the script again? Well, if you guessed uh, Ni Quan, yes, yep. You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. I don't know if you listened to the other, uh, I think it might have been my last show, but fucking uh, 225 screenplays, dude, that uh, Ni Kuang has has written. I'll say it again. 225 fucking screen. That is, nobody does that. Nobody does that. So a little bit about uh, Challenge of the Masters. Uh, the whole thing uh, is kind of framed around this festival, and whoever claims POW, P-A-O, um, would forever be a famed martial artist. Um, uh, but they also need to defend the title the following year. Um, Wong Fei Hung is basically kind of different from some Wong Fei Hung film. Not all. I mean, there's there's so many where he is kind of dopey and very young and shit. Um, and this is one of the ones where he's very young. Uh, Wong Fei Hung, played by Gordon Liu, tries hanging out uh, with a local martial arts group that just don't accept him. And uh, what's even more funny is he's such a dope, and he they, they consider him so young. One, he's just, he doesn't look young. But two, like, dad won't train him because he's immature. And his dad's, you know, a, a kung fu master. And he's like, nope, Fei Hung ain't, isn't ready. So we see a lot of training with Gordon Liu as Wong Fei Hung where it's awful, and he's just trying to pull from some of the things that he sees. But he's, like, throughout the majority of the film, he is considered basically a dope you know and he doesn't know kung fu no matter how hard he tries um and wouldn't you know it in this one our villain is lao kao lung uh which is great uh you get to see two of the very best um fuck around which is gordon Liu and lao kao lung um uh lao kao lung plays uncle he uncle he um, of course, the bullies in the film ask Uncle He if uh, they would train him and or train them, and he, of course, agrees. Um, what else do we got? Uncle He bullies Fei Hung for information to find out. Uh, nope, that's a spoiler. That's a spoiler. That's another spoiler. Uh, yep, Fei Hung wants to go to the competition, but is turned down. Uh, competition begins, Wong Fei Hung gets basically schooled and the shit kicked out of him, and of course, mom and, or I'm sorry, dad is pissed, um, so he goes to Trey, uh, brother, brother Jiang, uh, gets hurt pretty badly, agrees to Trey Fei, Fei Hung, because a lot of people around Fei Hung don't understand why his father's, father's not teaching him any Kung Fu, they're just like, well, why, well, he's a dope, well, so teach him Kung Fu so he's not a fucking dope. Um, there is a forest fight in this, uh, Lao Kar Wing versus Lao Kar Lung. Uh, those are real people. Uh, so good. Spear versus sword. Uh, it, I don't understand how a movie like this made so long ago, um, at this point, we don't see similar choreography um, these days anymore. I don't understand. The closest that we get to it in the States is probably John Wick. But even then, like, that is... I think even Keanu Reeves would would 
um, admit like, yeah, the, we we just can't do it like they used to do it. Their choreo they their choreography was next level, and you see it sometimes. Um, excuse me. Uh, nicely executed with some of the gun fu, as it's called, some of the gun fights in John Wick. But you know, like this the speared spear versus sword forest fight between two legends. You know, you stack that up against so much stuff that's been released, even even recently, and you're just like, well, fucking Challenge of the Masters is better, and I I would wholeheartedly agree. And if you say otherwise, I I question how many. <laughs> action films from around the world that you've seen because not even close not even close anyway um fei hung leaves the train with master lu um they do some wooden dummy training this movie this movie should have been called challenge of the training Training of the training of the masters is what it should have been called, because the majority of this it kind of reminds me of uh, Thirty Six Chamber of Shaolin, where it is so much more about like being a monk than it is people getting the shit kicked out of them. If you want that, you know, you stay for Executioners of Shaolin or um, Heroes of the East or you know something of that nature. Uh, but in this one, it, I mean, even Rocky Four had a montage. I even have that written down here. Rocky Four had a montage, and so does Challenge of the Masters. Um, you find out that uh, uh, that who he was supposed to get trained with, uh, uh, Yuan, uh, got killed by Lao Lao Leung in the spear versus sword fight. Actually, a sharp kick kills him, but he's cheating. Lao Kar Lung's cheating. He's got fucking metal on the end of his goddamn tootsies. And he's fucking... He's, he's not fighting fair. Anywho, wouldn't you know it, Wong Fei Hung uh, learns the staff, and we have another, yes, another wooden dummy training montage. <laughs> I mean, it's... It, it, it is... And I get it to a certain extent, but I also wonder, like, it, the only thing that's perplexing to me is that we have all these training, and maybe, or maybe I, I'm thinking of it wrong, is that as the years went by, uh, there should have been more and more fights, but, I, you know, now that I think about it, as years went by, maybe the masses demanded a little bit more plot, like, you know, uh, we, we know you can fight, we know you can fight, but it's our wits that make us men, it's our wits that make us men. Um, but the wooden dummy montage is pretty fucking sweet. There's a rain, uh, a rain fight that's super awesome, and basically, Gordon Liu is ready to fight after his training because he makes his uh, he makes uh, um, uh, Master Liu have to change hands with his pipe. Kind of give you a, an idea of how good Master Liu is. So you, you, I mean, that's not even the challenge that he gives Wang Fei Hung, but. Um, because uh, he fights Wong as he's training Wong Fei Hung, he, he only fights with one hand, and the fact that uh, Wong Fei Hung makes him switch hands to catch his pipe, the master's like, "Oh, you are not ready," and it's just like, "Ah, oh. you know, I feel like this movie would be a lot shorter if we just had Master Lu go and handle the business." Because if 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 Wong Fei Hung is ready to fight and go on his revenge tour. But you only needed one hand to <laughs> know if he was trained properly. Why don't you just go handle it, man? Would you just go take down the evil, take down uh, Master He, Uncle He, played by Lao Kar Long? Uh, why don't you just do it instead of? I mean, train Wang Fei Hung, sure, but I, I I feel like we could train Wang Fei Hung even more. Anyway, Fei Hung returns home. And tells uh, he tells Master He, Master Hifu, to meet him in the forest where he killed his friend, Yun. Um, so now, I mean, you're talking at least from a plot standpoint. Um, the final showdown is almost two years in the making. So when you see Wang Fei Hung and Uncle He fight, or Gordon Liu uh, versus Lao Ka Lung fight. It's two years in the making. That's another thing that I love about these Shaw Brothers films, too, is like, I mean, one, the endings are the best of all time. There's, I, I, I dare you to 
find better endings than these films. Any any film where you can end on the climax and then just freeze frame and just say the end, no credits, nothing, just the end, that that is a movie I want to watch. <laughs> um, but what they do a lot in these films is sometimes a shit ton of time passes. In fact, um, once I get to the seventh installment, like you'll see how ridiculous it can get sometimes. Like it is wild, um, and it's something that we kind of—I don't know—we I don't feel like we do it enough these days. And I don't know if you know there's not film or there's not money in film like there used to be. So having almost three different time periods, which it's not noticeable in this one, but like you know. Um, in, in perhaps like a science fiction film or something like that released from the States to do three different time periods wouldn't be cheap, you know, but I think it adds this certain, I don't know, a certain, mm -mm, a certain panache to the film. If so, like executioners of shout, not this one Ch challenge of the masters only two years passes before he goes and he fights uncle. He, but executioners of Shaolin, like uh, 16 17 years over the course of the film pass like that's pretty that's pretty fucking gnarly dude and to like weave it well i don't think is always the easiest to do um and yet shaw brothers you know i i don't maybe maybe i'm blinded by the light that i i'm not seeing that we're <laughs> we're kind of just throwing the plot to the <laughs> to the gutter and we're just like look we're just gonna get to the fights and this only makes sense as if we have a time change here and there i can see that i can see that but anyway finally lao kar Lung and gordon lu two years in the making and uh you know it's uh, another nice little nice little detail detail of this when uncle he lao kar Lung, play, uh killed uh gordon uh, wong fei hung's uh played by gordon lu his friend um, you know, it was two years ago when they finally meet Gordon Liu and Lao Kar Lung in the forest, uh, Wong Fei Hung and, uh, Uncle He, Uncle He doesn't even remember him. And I love that. Like, it was such a fucking, Uncle He just killed so many fucking people that it was, it was a, it was a non-entity that, uh, Gordon, Gordon, uh, Wong Fei Hung's friend was killed by him because he, I mean, he was just like, I've been training two years for this. And Uncle He's basically like, who are you again? Who did I fucking, who did I fucking kill? Again, it's almost like the crow. You guys remember the crow, Brandon Lee, when uh, he asked the guy in the out, the the black dude in the alleyway, um, if if he remembered killing Eric Draven's, is that his name? Eric Draven's uh, girlfriend, was it Sally, Sarah, Sarah, Sally, something, and. In the black dude's like some dude, some bitch who gives a fuck. That's basically how Uncle He. It responds to Gordon Liu, which I don't know. It makes him better a villain, does it not? Um, but a spear fight is to follow, okay? And it you're not going to see much better in terms of court, two masters of the craft going head-to-head. -head. You're not going to see much better. Um, remember I mentioned that whole festival where everybody's got to get POW, P-A- uh, o P A O, and it's like a scroll. <laughs> it's like a scroll. You'll have to see it. But that celebration slash end of Act Three slash climax, you have so much going on in terms of the fighting, and I want to say it lasts yeah, ten, twelve minutes. So let me kind of like paint a picture for you. If you have three, four different groups going at it, and each group has five to ten people in it, to cram all that in in 12 minutes, it's if you do it right, it looks good, and they did in this one. Challenge of the Masters is uh, people, you know, consider this a, a classic. Um, you know, not not that every single one is a classic, but they consider this one a classic. And you're talking 12 minutes of just bananas, dude. <laughs> You got weapons. You got hand-to-hand -hand combat. You you literally have it all. Now, I do want to spoil something for you. This movie ends much differently than a lot of the other films end. I mean, it, 
nine times out of ten in a Shaw Brother film, the person that's going to get revenge gets revenge. And if he doesn't, somebody else will. Either way, the villain is toast, okay? In this, it ends on a different Mortal Kombat finisher. It ends on friendship. Friendship, it really does. So, basically, what happens is... uh, Oh, man, who was the... uh, Oh, I love him too. He's a he's got a great uh, crane style. Oh, Fung Hark On, uh, Gordon Liu and uh, Hung uh, Fung Hark On, uh, they duel as they are trying to uh, uh, take possession of the scroll, the POW, if you will. And ultimately, Gordon Liu beats that ass. But what does he do? So he has the scroll. And he says, you know what, Fung Hark Un? You can just have it, man. You can just have the scroll. This 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 shit's just too fucking much. You can just fucking have it. And uh, because of Fung Hark Un's sway amongst his people, he screams, everybody stop! Everybody fucking stop! And they're all just kind of looking around like, what the fuck is going on? And he basically just says, why are we fighting? It turns into, uh, if I can change, it uh, uh, turns right into Rocky IV. If I can change, and you can change, then everybody can change. <laughs> and then 80s music plays us out. It doesn't, not in this one. But it's a nice little breath of fresh air. Like the next one that we're going to discuss, I can assure you, does not end on friendship. <laughs> no, 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 no. Does not end on friendship by a long shot. In fact, pretty brutal. So it's a nice, uh, because up until this point, it, the, the endings are, for the most part, kind of brutal, right? Even like the Mighty Peking Man, which I felt like I wasted 90 minutes of my life on, I, the, the gorillas engulfed in flames at the end of the movie. That's not happy. <laughs> it's not happy at all. And in fact, Executioner's Shaolin, you have basically two different endings, and one of them is not happy. <laughs> One of this was just not happy at all. And and Shaw Brothers are notorious for Well, I actually, I would say films from the East, I always say this, always, 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 always say this. Films from the East, uh, filmmakers from the East, they do not give a fuck about your feelings. They don't. And I love it. I absolutely love it. Like, oh, you've grown attached to this character for an hour and 25 minutes. Well, we're going to kill him. You know, whereas, like, put it into context, if this was a film from the West, what we're going to do in the first 15 minutes, we're going to cram a a, a bunch of um, character into, you know, someone who's second or third fiddle, and then we'll kill him off 25 minutes into it. So there's a basis for everything. No, they don't do that in Shaw Shaw Brothers films, not by a long shot. In fact, I almost think on some level they take pride in being offensive. (laughs) Being actually, I don't even think it's, it's like being offensive. It's like, no, dude, like that's life. Like fucking life isn't always fucking killing the master and going home to your wife and kids. Sometimes it's you sacrifice yourself to the villain, and your wife and kid gets to live in harmony, as opposed to you know constantly looking over your shoulder and shit like that. And I, you know, we it just doesn't happen as much as it fucking should these days. I I long for the days where the climax happens. And I, I again, I don't know if I mentioned it on this one, but like. You put things into context, like it would be the equivalent of like John Wick Four. We freeze framed on the villain catching, you know, a bullet to the neck and the squib exploding, and then free fra- freeze framing on his exploding neck, and then I would say the end. Could you imagine how wild that would be? I mean, don't get me wrong; like people would be fucking pissed because I don't know. Everybody needs fucking closure these days, but Shaw Brothers don't give a fuck about that. Shaw Scope Volume One. Available by Arrow Video. You know, you can get it right now. Challenge of the Masters. Check it out. Gordon Liu, Lau Kar Lung. I urge you to see where the good shit came from. Tell you what, second to none, them two. Ellis Cinema, Arrow Video, gone. <laughs>